onto the new fire breather, the Nemesis NXT. Uh, a couple things which, before we get too far. Air racing is audience participation sport, so you all have to participate by writing qu or asking questions. We'll do that in a little while. And it really helps if you write them down on a piece of paper, like a $20 bill maybe. Give them to my wife over there, and, and she'll make sure that the question's answered. So. Anyway, so I'm going to get on to the Nemesis NXT, which is our new airplane. Uh, you'll notice there's no landing gear on that and all that good stuff. So, Nemesis NXT, again, with the new, new airplane, the NXT, versus the Formula One airplane, you have to have a, a plan. So we established some goals, which was to ultimately kick butt again. I'm going to talk about our little approach that we did, how to do, how we did it, some of the specifications, some of the performance and results that people really want to know the performance, speed secrets, which is the big thing, and also give you a little introduction to the sport class rules. Our goals for the Nemesis NXT was to build a breathtakingly fast prototype. <clears throat> we entered into the sport class, this is the class that we went into with this airplane, full well thinking that we were just going to build one airplane. So we're designing this airplane, we're having a great time thinking, you know, here we go, we're going to beat them all up again. And my wife gets a call from the president of the sport class and says, oh, by the way, you guys have to make five kits. So we go, oh, not good. We have to make kits now. So my wife calls me up on the phone. I'm working at Lockheed, doing, working on the airplane. And, um, She's crying. She goes, I guess we're in the kit business. And I go, well, what are you talking about? So she told me the story. And the reason they wanted it to be a kit airplane is the class was based on a kit program where you could go out and buy a Lancer Legacy or a Glass Air or whatever, build it, race it, be competitive. So <clears throat> anyway, so that was changed our whole philosophy away from a one-off airplane to having more than one. We also wanted to set a whole bunch of new speed records in a little heavier weight category. Ultimately, KBTN, kick butt, take names, and have fun. That was our main goal there with that. And continue chasing our dream. With our approach, we used a strong, a strong, strong team support. We had about 25 people that work on this airplane. I'm just lucky enough to be able to sit in the seat. We took. Uh, advanced aerodynamics uh, we used on this airplane. Uh, we went to NASA again to look at airfoil sections. We made the airplane completely 100% carbon fiber. So it's a completely composite airplane. And mainly we wanted to focus on attention to details to make it go fast. <clears throat> again, I mentioned the cast of thousands. This is just a little picture of the people that are on the crew at Reno. It doesn't even reflect all the people that helped us with the airplane. So, Advanced aerodynamics. You see there? There it goes, right through the picture. Anyway, um, on the left, on, on your left, is a wind tunnel model that we used, and we tested this at the Lockheed Wind Tunnel. Same tunnel that uh, tested everything from the P-63 through shuttles, F-117s, SR-71s, F-22s, F-35s, you name it, at Lockheed, this airplane was also in that same wind tunnel. It's a little bitty model about this big, tiny, tiny, it was a 1 18th scale. So anyway, you can see the bottom picture there is a little picture of the uh, flow visualization where you put uh, baby powder and kerosene, you brush the whole airplane with baby powder and kerosene, turn on the tunnel, and you watch the flow that's created by uh, the traces of the baby powder. And wherever there's a problem, uh, a, a, a flow separation, the, the kerosene stays wet. And you can see that down at the very front bottom. There you can see a little dark spot. That's where there's a flow separation. There's a couple elsewhere on the plane. So we did a little work to it to get it to, to uh, not do that. <clears throat> Advanced composite construction. The whole airplane's carbon fiber. You can see all the carbon parts and the molds there in our shop. Um, you see at the top center, there's uh, two wing molds sitting there. There, all the molds were also carbon fiber. Every mold for this airplane was CNC machined from a computer. It's the first time that a kid airplane has ever, ever had that, along with the wind tunnel testing. <clears throat> the picture on the left there is my wife. 
She made all the parts, every one of them for the first five kits, laid every one of them up, bagged every one of them, rolled them into the oven, cured them at 250 degrees, pulled them out. I got to put them together. So she did all the work and I had all the fun. <clears throat> Attention to details. This airplane was very complex in that it had systems that the Formula One didn't have, retractable landing gear, flaps, hydraulic systems, power systems, all this stuff. So this is a little picture, a computer rendering of the landing gear. And to orient you, you're kind of looking down through the wing. Uh, you see the fuselage there kind of on the left and the gear mechanism in there. <clears throat> this is the gear coming down part way. Kind of at the left side of the screen there, you'll see the gear door mechanism, the inner gear door mechanism. So the, the whole system was designed so there was no micro switches or anything that tripped anything to uh, activate a uh, sensor, to move anything. This was all mechanically done when the, when the gear hit this port, it flipped this up and the door came up and that sort of thing. So it was all mechanically done, no electronic uh, micro switches, that sort of thing. So it was very simple, we thought. There's another view of it there. And there it is all the way down. You can see at the very right side of the screen, the outer gear door, the little shadow of it with those little pink gooseneck hinges, and then the inner gear door at the far left of the screen. Those are the kind of things we had to do with this airplane to make it go. Specifications, I don't know how much you want to hear about this. This airplane, the NXT, is a two-place airplane. Side by side, my wife and I get in it, fly cross country, typically cruise from, uh, Mojave to Oshkosh in about six hours. We go about 385 miles an hour, 10,000 feet. And no matter what, where we're going, we're on typically on flight following, talking to controllers. We say, uh, experimental triple three x-ray tango flight following. There'll be a little silence there and they go, so what kind of experimental is that? <laughs> so we tell them and they, most of them knew what it, what it was. And, oh, is this John or is this this guy? So we, we always have fun flying this airplane, my wife and I. She's the navigator, she runs all the equipment, tells me where to go. So can, can relate to that. Um, it's main gear retract that you saw, steerable tail wheel, you know, all these things, luxuries that we didn't have in the Formula One. It's a side stick controller, so the stick is right in the middle of the cockpit like a Corvette shifter. So my wife can fly it too, I just let go of the stick and she grabs it flies it around, she does faster rolls than I do. So it's all carbon fiber. It has split flaps, so when you look at the top of the wing, you see nothing. You drop the flaps and they appear out of the bottom of the wing. Another little system that we had to deal with. For size, it's 24 foot wingspan and basically 24 feet long. Weighs 1,500 pounds empty, 2,600 pounds gross. Carries 90 gallons of gasoline in one tank, right in the fuselage. When you're sitting in it, it's kind of like sitting in your lazy boy chair with your soda in your right hand and your pretzels in your left, so the throttle and mixture are on your left and the sticks in your right. Very, very, very comfortable ride. The engine, the most important thing, the airplane was basically sized and designed around the engine. It's a six-cylinder, uh, six 540 cubic inch, twin turbocharged, twin intercooled, Lycoming 540. So it's an awesome fire-breathing engine. We loved it. Makes a whole bunch of horsepower. The, the data plate says 350. Our race horsepower, <coughs> so I can't tell you that. I'd have to kill you all. Performance of the airplane. Everybody wants to know how fast does the plane go. It's pretty simple. Speed, breathtaking. Landing speed, breathtaking, very much so. Takeoff distance, again, breathtaking. Climb performance, the oh, landing distance, sorry, again, breathtaking. Landing distance, very long in this airplane. Climb rate, not so breathtaking. So. Actually, the climb was not a consideration in the design at all, other than the fact that it would just get off the runway. It actually turns out that the climb rate is close to 4,000 feet a minute, so it actually climbs pretty darn well. So we're real pleased with that as being, I think they call that an engineering byproduct.